Looks like we've got a new contender for best movie trilogy of all time. Means I like this movie. So let's talk about it. War for the Planet of the Apes takes place just a few years after Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and it's a direct continuation of the events of that film. At the end of that film, a message was sent to a military to come down and wipe out Caesar and his apes. At the beginning of this movie, they're having some victories and they cause some great loss for the apes and thus that sets up a tension within Caesar of on the one hand he wants revenge and on the other he needs to keep his people safe and this conflict within him as well as the conflict with this group of military men out to take out the apes creates the main plot line for this movie, as well as several other things that weren't really revealed in the trailer, so I'm not gonna go into them, but there's a lot of layers and depth to what's going on that both creates a great conclusion to this trilogy of films about the rise, dawn, and war for the planet of the apes, as well as setting up where things would go leading into the theoretical version of the Charlton Heston story that they could tell after this movie. With all that said, this is a very enjoyable, great summer drama blockbuster. It's a tragedy, it's the rise of a hero, it's so many different dramatic uh, genres coming together with a movie that doesn't sound like it should work, a movie about talking apes battling humans should be cheesy and corny and that's the exact opposite of what this movie is and i've loved the two movies before this one and i loved this one as well but before i give you my complete thoughts on this movie be sure to check out my review of rise of the planet of the apes as well as dawn of the planet of the apes i did both of them with ryan o'toole we had a lot of fun discussing those movies in depth what we loved about them also i wrote an article for men vs movies called uh talking about how planet of the apes is the original modern day franchise franchise because it had five sequels, a spinoff, it was an adaptation of a book, they brought an A-list star. It's an article I wrote, I hope you check it out if you're into Planet of the Apes or if you're into kind of the history of the movies and thinking about franchise and all that fun stuff, just some thoughts that I had on that. And finally, I'm going to be ranking all nine Planet of the Apes movies. That will be out Saturday. I'm going to be shooting it tomorrow night. I got one more movie I need to rewatch before I do that video. With that said, let's get into my review. Right out of the gate, you've got to talk about the great performances in this film. And then, of course, Andy Serkis, the master of motion capture. Ever since the first film in the series we've been talking about, is he going to get an Oscar nomination once again here? You start thinking, should he get an Oscar nomination? And just what he can communicate through, through his facial expressions and in just these moments where so much of the movie he's just really intense and angry. And then when those other emotions come out of him and he just emotes it, it's so powerful. And just these small glances communicate so much. And you know what he's thinking just from the twitches in his face and the way he says single lines, the way he carries himself. It's so good. And it's not just him. All the performances around are wonderful in this movie where... I don't know who all the people are that were the different characters, but like the Maurice, the best friend, mentor, advisor type uh, friend to Caesar. Likewise, just in the looks that he gives and just the tilts of his head and things like that communicates so much and you understand him so well. Steve Zahn's bad ape in this. Uh, you don't get a real taste of what his character is going to be like in the trailers. You just get a, like a little hint of what he's going to be. And he's very much the comic relief character in the movie that if you if they put it in the trailers, you wouldn't be able to set things up properly and it would look bad. <laughs> it would feel like totally out of place in the movie. But the way the movie works, it's the perfect break of the tension that's building because up until when his character shows up in the movie, it's just tense, harsh, hard to, to be around with deep, dark emotions. And then he's able to break some of that tension, which you kind of need that movie like this that's had dwell so much on the extinction of mankind, the death of loved ones, the uh, trying to lead a people as they're being wiped out by someone else. So many heavy emotions. Having this bad, out, a, bad ape character voiced by Steve Zahn creates the right element to it. I, I thought he fit perfectly into the movie. It's just a different personality in this world that's like a personality that you would think would exist. And they crafted a really interesting character once again there. And not just to the performance of Caesar by Andy Serkis makes him interesting, the character they've crafted in Caesar and the journey that he's taken throughout these movies 
is one of my favorite characters of the 21st century, one of my favorite movie characters of all time. And they've been able to do something interesting with him because of the story that they're telling about the extinction of mankind, the rise of the apes. And so you can tell an epic story, an epic in the proper usage of the word, in that he is the initial leader and freer in not ruler per se, but kind of the ruler of a new class of people that rise to prominence on the planet. That's a true epic spanning over three films. And you get to see him go from being Franco's, not pet, but pet child living up in the attic to this leader that you see here that you know, falls into the brave heart to Spartacus type character in this story is the freedom fighter, the warrior, um, and the person feeling the weight of leadership and the loss that comes with it throughout this movie. So it's just very compelling. Also, they my fear with the Woody Harrelson character is that he would be too one note and just being the evil, brutal military guy out to take out the apes. And I thought that it was going to be the case with Gary Oldman and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And with Gary Oldman, they had a lot more layers to him. He very much wasn't that. Woody Harrelson is much closer to being the one dimensional character that the trailer kind of portrayed him as. Do you give you some things to help you understand where he's coming from? He's pretty one dimensional. It's tr and I don't necessarily say that as a criticism, which will lead in kind of my next point to talk about here. Because the world that they've created, the drama, the tension, all of this is a world with extreme stakes. And so as you look at the lifetime of Woody Harrelson's character, he has watched the near extinction of mankind and he's watching as there's just 1% or whatever the percentage of humans left on the planet desperately trying to survive in a chaotic world. And it makes him a person with a singular focus. And in doing so, it makes him somewhat of a one dimensional character of sorts, but that fits the world that he's in, the situation that he's in and the way he's decided to cope with all of this and make sense of it. And so it, it's not so much that he had all these layers, different directions, but they gave you a world to where you would understand where he's coming from. They give you enough backstory to understand why he is so singularly fo focused, so brutal in what he's trying to do and understand where he's coming from in all of that. And like all these other films in the series, absolutely love what they've managed to do with building true stakes and tension in it. Each of these movies feels like the opening acts of sorts. It's like they're setting up a series of dominoes. All three of these, this Apes trilogy, the first act sets up a bunch of dominoes all the way kind of into the second act. And then eventually it all gets pushed over and you can just see the whole unraveling of what they've set up because of the tense world that they are in where there's tension that the smallest thing could break the setup of the world that they're in and lead to horrible consequences is what you see kind of in this movie, what you saw in Dawn, what you saw in Rise, and it's true conflict. It's not mustache twirling villains. It's people with worldviews that you understand why they're so desperate, why they're so tense, why are they so afraid and behaving the way they're doing, which it, on the one hand you go, oh, they're so evil, please stop doing that. Stop, you're being so cruel. And at the same time you're going, they're facing extinction. They know they could be dead. They know so many people who are dead. I guess I really do understand why they're doing what they're doing. And finally, if you actually two more finalies, two more finalies, you can't have two more finalies. Next one, the music in this is is really great. I mean, just some of these moments, these small character moments with the Nova character doing certain things and the music starts playing and it's so powerful, so emotional and just a beautiful just melody communicating hope and grace and mercy and peace in these moments that are in kind of very tense, scary, and the innocence of the Nova character does things. And it's all communicated kind of through the music and just these smiles on her face, very powerful. The final, finally on the good side is the CGI here, the, the apes, it's, it's astounding. I mean, the only thing left for them to be able to do now that they've did this and it was so good and believable is to be able to do humans. Then there's that 
uncanny valley, the gap between, for some reason, humans, we, our brain just tells us that it's not quite right. These apes looked right. Like, I, 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 there was one or two shots in the whole movie where I went, hmm. And there were shots that had a good little mo movement in them where Caesar's on a horse or something like that. And some of the gravity of it didn't look quite right. But I'm talking about two seconds of a movie whose lead character is CGI, and it is absolutely believable. And you, you absolutely forget you're watching CGI characters. It is that good. Well, I really did like this movie. There were a couple things that didn't work quite right for me, so let's talk about the bad. First off, and this is kind of a small thing, but kind of a main plot point, there's a thing going on with the humans in the story and the way it's portrayed and handled in the story. Um, it just felt off. The way they decided to communicate something and uh, let you know what's going on with them, I, I didn't really like the way it was handled and it just felt distracting to me and perhaps could have they could have put, spent a little bit more time in the drawing room trying to figure out how to articulate this thing in a way that fit right in this world and it just felt a little bit off to me. That's the first thing and the second one's a little bit bigger of a criticism and it's kind of what I said about the other two films as well is the conveniences in the storytelling pop a little bit more because the film's so well crafted and the drama so well handled that when something is a conven screenwriting convenience to make all the pieces fit together just right, it stands out a little bit. And so there's a couple points in the story where th they cheat the timeline a little bit or something suddenly happens to where you're like, wait, how did this happen? How long has this been going on? And they had a plot line that seemed to need to stretch over a longer period of time to be as emotional and powerful as they're trying to make it be, but it didn't fit up with other plot points that were going along in the story. And so overall, it, it, it just felt too convenient, too congested to like make it fit into this timeline of the story they were trying to tell. And when you see the movie, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about in, in the way the story's kind of streamlined a little bit. But really, that's kind of it. It's a very well-constructed movie that has emotion, that has some great action sequences, that's just a well-crafted, dramatic story with true drama intention where you understand different perspectives. All in all, I really, really liked this movie and I'm debating it, debating in my head whether I like this one more than Dawn. How did I feel kind of fit in things in the scheme of things? Overall, I'm gonna give this a 9.4 out of 10. It is the, for me, the best movie that I have seen thus far this year. I really enjoyed it. It's a great conclusion to this series and if I'm being honest, I really want you to go see this movie. Please go see this movie. Send a message to Hollywood with your money. Communicate to them. We want blockbusters like this. Now, we want fun blockbusters as well. This one's not really a fun movie. It's pretty dramatic, sad, a lot of heavy emotions in it. But we want well-crafted drama with characters that are fleshed out, with storylines that are complex. This is what we want. It has incredible special effects, big spectacle, and it's a neat, neat movie. Please go and see it. Please support it. But that's just my take on it. How about you? Tell me what you thought about it down below in the comments section. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, where this one falls in the scheme of best trilogies of all time, or is that are people overhyping this trilogy a little bit too much? Tell me what you think about it. If you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, ranking videos. My next one is going to be about all nine Planet of the Apes movies. That's going to be up on Saturday. Uh, but I don't want to just talk about movies. I want to talk about movies with you. So join me down in the comments section. Please check out that Men vs. Movies article I wrote on Planet of the Apes franchise. And as always, thank you for watching.